Psalms 2 6 is one of the earliest prophecies of the fact of the reestablishment of Israel and the King, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, will be sitting upon the throne of David on Zion. It says, Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill, Zion. Of course, the hill belongs to God. <laughs> Israel belongs to God. And he's given it to them. He's made an everlasting covenant unto them. That means Israel has to inherit the land again. Of course, they do presently since May 14th, 1948. They became a nation again. So amazing. Well, then what happens? Well, Psalm, by the way, 132, 13, it says, The Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. Here I dwell forever. Notice that. And so the land is God's. He's given it to the house of Israel. Genesis 12, 7 points this out. He, he also mentions in Amos 9, 14 through 15, that even after they are dispersed among the nations, they will be brought back and I will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, says the Lord, your God. Again, May 14, 1948. Amazing prophecy of Israel in the land. And then Messiah, of course, from Psalms chapter 2, verse 6, points to the fact that, you know, Jesus will be sitting upon the throne of David in Zion. God bless you as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Messiah. He's the King of Israel. He's the King of the world. And we Gentiles, the church, has been grafted back in. Now, we're going to be raptured prior to that tribulation. Understand the tribulation. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the purpose is to wake up Israel. The church doesn't need to be woke up. It's also a time of great judgment. The church is Jesus Christ's bride. So they're not, you know, the Lord Jesus is not going to allow his, his bride to go through being beat up or persecuted, but it is a time of persecution, and it is a time of refining, and it is a time that the eyes of Israel as a nation will be opened up, and that's what the tribulation is about, and then judge Christ rejecting world. Then at the end of that seven-year tribulation, Jesus Christ comes back, Zechariah 14, also Revelation 19, and he destroys the works of the enemy, puts the beast and the false prophet into the lake of fire and then he takes satan and satan is bound revelation uh 20 and bound it for a thousand years and that's of course where we get the millennial kingdom it's a literal thousand years and of course isaiah 9 6 and 7 and what we see in, in revelation 20 jesus christ will be ruling and reigning on the king, on the throne of david as king david will be there too and so will all uh the all the disciples, the church will be there, uh, come back with Jesus. The uh, tribulation saints will be there. It, 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 and, and of course, the church saints will be there. So, and, and Old Testament saints will be there. So it'll be an amazing time of rebuilding yeah, for 1,000 years. And then, of course, at the end of the 1,000 years, Satan's released again, gets a, manages to get a whole cohort against Jesus again. Crazy things. But we know who wins. And then God will, of course, you get into the end of, of, of Revelation, new heavens and new earth, and, and it'll be glorious. So we got a lot to look forward to. Keep your eyes, uh, you know, uh, looking up. Your redemption draws nigh. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. And understand, he loves you very much. He wants you to repent from your sins. That means turn from your direction and your way and turn unto him. And he has such a plan for all of us. Surrender your life. That's probably the key word, surrender your life. Repent, surrender unto Jesus, receive him as your Lord and Savior, and walk with him, and he will give you, he gives you the Holy Spirit to help you to follow and walk with him and to hear him. God bless you. Read your Bible and pray, for there's no other way. Trust in Jesus. God bless you.